Hey everybody, today we're going to be drawing a flamingo, one of my favorite animals, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about flamingos while I show you how to draw this cutie. So we're going to start with kind of an S shape, and we're going to end our S shape about halfway down our paper. We want to leave a lot of room on the bottom for their big long legs. So this is going to be the neck, the head is going to be up here. A little ovaly shape. The beak is going to be around there. And let's make the body. Remember, when you're drawing an animal, no matter how simple or complicated it is, it's always good to start with very simple shapes and lines. Just get the basic gist of it. Don't start with the little details because then you might find you don't have enough space on your paper to finish it or you might find that you spent so much time on the details you don't have enough time to do all the rest. There's a lot of things that can go wrong that way. So make sure you do all the big, big, big parts first. This is going to be the body. The legs, I'm going to have one coming straight down. Put a knee here. Foot here. And I'm going to have one bent, so it's going to come down and back out. Knee here. They have kind of funny knees. Their knees bend the opposite way that ours do. It's really odd. Alright, let's finish up the neck and head. I'm going to continue the body out here that's going to turn into the neck. So we're going to come up here. This squiggly line is just a guideline. I can follow it or not follow it, whatever feels right while I'm working here. So I'm going to come up. I'm going to erase this. I don't need this part anymore. This is a really junky pencil. And let's make the back part of the neck coming out. It's going to be thicker at the bottom here where it connects to the body. And then it's going to be thinner up where the head is. So I'm kind of following the guideline, but not exactly. It's just there to show me kind of where the neck goes. Okay, this is going to curve up. And then let's see what we're doing with this head here. It's going to curve down a little bit. Head is pretty big up here and then curves down to the beak. Okay, so always little fixing as you go. That's the whole thing about sketching. Your first line might not be right. Keep sketching until you find it. Okay, so like my beak isn't right anymore. I need to move it, but that's okay. It's just a sketch. Let's see, it's going to attach to the face like this. And then kind of curve down like this. There we go. And then the beak has kind of a funny sort of a design on it. It kind of curves out and up and then back down again. Okay, let's do her eye right here. Doing a little curvy U shape. Inside of that I'm doing a little circle pupil inside of that and then just finish it off on the bottom. You know what, I'm going to move that eyeball up a bit and make this skinnier because their heads are really not that big. They got kind of small heads compared to their giant bodies. Did you know flamingos only weigh like five pounds? Isn't that crazy? Think of like a five pound bag of sugar. That's how much a flamingo weighs. They have to weigh very little so that they can get up off the ground. Flamingos actually can fly. You don't see it all that often, especially not around where I live, but they can fly pretty well. Okay, there we go. Now, I'm going to finish off down here. The body is mostly done. I'm just doing the outline for right now. I'm going to add a little wing here, like so. Alright, I'm going to finish off these legs because they are way too skinny. Even though flamingos do have very skinny legs, they're not that skinny. Okay. Alright, now we're ready to add some color. For my coloring today, 
I'm going to use a couple different tools. I'm using a Micron pen. This is a waterproof um, pen. And I'm going to use watercolor pencils today. These are Prismacolor watercolor pencils. These are really fun. They're kind of like a mixture between watercolor and colored pencil. I'm sure you already guessed that. And I'm going to show you how they work. You also need water and a brush, which I have over to the side here. But let me do this part first. First, I'm going to... Oh my goodness, this head still is not right. Hold on a minute. I can't go forward till I fix it. There we are. That's a flamingo head. Okay, now... I'm going to use the pen to do the black parts of the drawing. I'm not using um, the watercolor to do the black part because I'm afraid it will bleed and I really don't want black bleeding um, watercolor pencil all over my paper. Black tends to be a very dominant color. There we go. So I'm just going to use my pen to color in the beak instead of using the watercolor. I'll show you what happened. I did another one with the watercolor just to show you. And it's very strong and dominant and it kinda got everywhere. So we don't want that. We're gonna use just a pen. If you wanna do it, you can do whatever you want. It is your painting, your drawing. You can do anything that you like on your project. You could even use a Sharpie marker if that's what you wanna do. Wow, this is dying, isn't it? I'm gonna have to go back in and fill that in later. All right, I'm gonna use these guys next. So I'm gonna use the lightest color first and I'm gonna color in the whole flamingo with this nice and light. Whether you're using colored pencils or watercolors or what I have here, which is both, you always wanna go from light to dark. So light goes first you can always get darker as you go, but you can't really lighten these up. These are not really erasable, so you can't lighten them up if you make a mistake. So always go light first. So I'm doing very little pressure. Nice and light. I'm going to fill the whole thing in. And while I'm doing that, I'll tell you some fun facts about flamingos. They are super cool. Did you know that their pink feathers are not actually like a totally natural occurrence? They aren't just naturally pink. The pink coloring comes from their diet. So they like to eat a lot of crustaceans and plankton. And those foods have a lot of beta carotene in them, which turns the penguins, or penguins, turns the flamingos feathers pink which is really cool. They've actually done experiments in zoos where they changed the flamingo's diet and the lack of beta carotene turned their feathers white. So they aren't really naturally pink. They are, because this is their natural diet, but they aren't born that way. They're actually born gray, believe it or not. They're born gray and kind of fuzzy and really adorable. And they don't turn pink until they are about a year or two old. Here's another funny thing about flamingos. They like to steal each other's nests, which is just so weird. They like to steal each other's nests, so they'll build one, and then another set of flamingos will come along and just inhabit it, take it over, and raise their own babies there. So when they build their nests, they have to be really careful of that. Okay. I'm going to go back in with the same color and darken up some areas to add some shadows. So usually shadows would be falling like down here on the bottom. I'm going to add some color into here, some darker values into here. shade down here a little bit and add some more color up here. So I'm just pressing down same colored pencil, pressing down a little bit harder to get some different values in there. All right, now I'm going to grab my next color. That color that I just used is called blush pink. Now I'm going to use carmine red, which is 
more like a hot pink color and I'm gonna come in and add that too. I'm gonna make that right on top, nice and dark. Adding more shadows with my dark pink color. And I'm going right over the top of my pencil. It would have been a better idea for me to erase some of the pencil first or lighten it up, but I'm pretty confident that this dark pink color will cover it for the most part, so I'm not too worried about it. All right, I'm gonna add some real dark heavy tones in here just for fun. Different colors and different shades add a lot of variety to your artwork, which makes it more interesting to look at. It would be pretty boring if it was all just one shade. Here's another fun thing about flamingos. The lawn flamingo, I don't know if you guys have ever seen those, I'm sure you have. Lawn flamingos were invented by an artist, actually. They were first made in 1957 as an art piece by an artist named um, Don Featherstone which is the perfect name for the person who invented lawn flamingos. And he started putting them on his lawn and they grew in popularity over the years. Now, they're not as popular now as they were back then to the point where, now let me tell you, real flamingos are not endangered, but people are claiming now that lawn flamingos are endangered which is ridiculous, but they're claiming that lawn flamingos are endangered because you don't see them very much anymore. And there's actually groups that are aiming to bring them back. They wanna see lawn flamingos on every lawn in America, they say, which is kinda crazy, but pretty fun also. So there's like an art movement that's starting already. Take back the lawns by the flamingos. We'll see if they succeed. I don't know about that, but I think lawn flamingos are actually pretty cool. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of this dark pink down into the legs. Flamingo legs are kind of funky looking, like they tend to be a little bit differently colored than the body and the neck and the head. So you can kind of have fun with it. And I'm going to actually add some lilac color to that, this lilac purple because a lot of flamingos have a lot of purple in their legs. So I'm gonna add that down here too. Just some little bits of it. And I'm also gonna use it up on the top just a little bit. I'm gonna add it kind of randomly. So there's just like some little patches of purpley color. Flamingos can have some sort of lilac purple in them too. They're all kind of different. If you look at big groups of them, they're all kind of differently colored, which is pretty neat. Okay, we're getting there. We're almost ready for water. Add a little bit more of the dark blush pink in here. And we're ready for water. So I'm using just a regular water cup and a regular brush to start adding water. I'm gonna start up on the top here. I'm using just a little bit of water and pushing it around right on top of that watercolor pencil. And it's helping to blend all those colors together. It kind of turns it into paint. It's not exactly the same as paint, but it's a cool way to do painting if you don't have paint. It's all you need is water and watercolor pencils. So I'm just using a little bit of water, kind of dabbing it on there, pushing it around. You don't want to do too much movement with it because if I try to move my brush way too much back and forth, back and forth, it's going to kind of erase the color. All I'm doing is trying to make the color liquidy and let, let it blend. All right, that's looking cute. Keep going down the neck, blend all that. If you have areas where you were a little too scratchy with your pencils, like I was right here, you can go kind of in little circles like this, and that helps to blend those scratchy lines together. So it looks more like paint and less like 
pencil. Now I'm not an expert with watercolor pencils. These are just a fun thing I use on occasion. I'm not uh, an expert. I'm not the kind of person who does this all day every day. There are some people who are amazing with watercolor pencils. I'm not one of them. I'm just having fun with it, using it as a sketching tool to add some color to my flamingo sketch. You see how I'm working from top to bottom? That's so I don't stick my hand in my wet painting. You always want to work top to bottom when you're working with wet media. Or else hold your hand like this so you don't get it all ruined. very scratchy here with the pencil. Sometimes if you add a little bit more water, a little bit more movement with your brush, you can get it to look more like paint. I can leave some of those lines though because this is where that would be very feathery. So it's okay to have a little texture here. It doesn't need to be totally smooth. All right, let's do these legs. Carefully, they're so skinny. And there we are, we have our fun little flamingo. I had a fun time doing that. I hope you guys enjoy doing your flamingo too. And I will see you again tomorrow for a new creature. All right, have a good day.